In the world of MS, neuroinflammation takes center stage. Immune cells are revved up, releasing pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines. This cascade not only fuels neuroinflammation, but also sparks the production of what is called reactive oxygen species. Think of reactive oxygen species as the mischievous player messing around in the world of multiple sclerosis, stirring up the intricate and abnormal changes. <laughs> but fear not. I'm here to guide you through fighting back and kickstarting your remyelination journey. Hey, it's Steve. Both reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress are like two peas in a pod. High levels of oxidative stress can throw a wrench into myelin regeneration, a crucial process in MS. But here's the juicy bit. When it comes to fats, not all fats are created equal. When heated while cooking, monounsaturated fats with their double bonds are prone to oxidation. That's bad. But wait, polyunsaturated fats bring an even bigger oxidation bullseye with their multiple double bonds. It's like they have oxidized me written all over them. Now, We've been fed the idea that monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats are the heroes, while saturated fats are the villains. But hold on to your hats. A hundred years ago, our grandparents and great-grandparents loaded up on saturated fats from sources like meat, dairy, coconut oil, and palm oil. Traditional cooking, think lard and butter, which add richness and fullness to dishes. Fast forward to modern times. Saturated fats have been labeled unhealthy, mainly thanks to one man, Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was an American psychologist who studied the influence of diet on health. He became famous for his Seven Countries study in 1958. His exploratory research was on the relationship between dietary patterns and prevalence of coronary heart disease in the United States. Canada, Australia, England, Italy, and Japan. The focus was on one thing, dietary cholesterol. Early in the study, Ansel Keys and colleagues noticed an interesting association across cultures. They differed in their diets and corresponding differences were seen in saturated fats cholesterol and coronary heart disease rates and there were follow-ups after five and ten years. This graph makes an incredible correlation between coronary heart disease and saturated fat. It appears the higher amount of saturated fat, the higher the rate of heart disease. It's stunning. Could it be any clearer? I mean, just look at it. It's like a perfect correlation. It's like that graph was made up and the results are perfectly in line with what Keyes predicted. <laughs> the problem is that the results were cherry picked. Key selected the countries he had used to make the graph. 
if he had used the data from all 22 countries he had collected data from, the study's results would have been much weaker. Recent studies are poking holes in the idea that saturated fats are the sole villains behind high cholesterol levels. The plot thickens as researchers now suggest that the whole saturated fat equals higher cholesterol saga might need a rewrite. I perform aerobic exercise on my rowing machine every day and the combination of aerobic exercise and lifting weights every other day. Aerobic exercise can help increase levels of good HDL cholesterol while lowering bad LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. Strength training can also contribute to improving cholesterol profiles by enhancing overall cardiovascular health and metabolism. But let's not forget it's essential for remyelination. While Ansel Keys triggered a slew of studies trying to demonize saturated fat, fear not, science fights back and addresses our focus on remyelination. Science proves saturated fat's role in supporting myelin regeneration, offering a glimmer of hope for MS warriors. In the realm of scientific remyelination discoveries, saturated fats have stepped into the spotlight for their potential perks in remyelination. The significance of saturated fat intake in influencing myelin production and repair emphasizes the potential impact it has on the restoration of myelin in cases of demyelination in the central nervous system. The growing research pool is not slowing down. But wait, there's more. Tail after tail hints at the beneficial effects of saturated fats on remyelination. Saturated fats act as energy and provide structural components vital for crafting myelin recovery. Behold the tale of palmitic acid. A gallant hero found thanks to animal studies, paving the way for the creation of sphingomyelin, an essential component of myelin. In another enchanting tale spun by the wise Penelope Demas et al. shows the process of CNS remyelination is reliant on the synthesis of fatty acids by oligodendrocytes. Fatty acid synthesis within oligodendrocytes plays a critical role in for the formation and encouraging the growth and maturity of oligodendrocytes. Saturated fats uphold the fortitude and unity of myelin, essential for the recovery of nerve impulses. As the mechanism behind the effects on saturated fats on remyelination slowly unravel, hints from studies suggesting that these fats in our diets make up may tweak the melodies of myelin membrane composition and stir the regenerative spirits of oligodendrocytes. I believe the combination of exercise and saturated fats influence immune responses and cytokine production. Since I've been taking clomastine, I've seen immense recovery in my right leg, strength and balance. This improvement correlates perfectly with when I started eating a lot more coconut butter.
Enter my high-low calorie diet dance, where I bounce back and forth between a high of 3,977 calories and a low of 1,463 calories for the day. The calorie swing on high days has a lot to do with my oatmeal. It includes three-fourths of a cup of walnuts and a half a cup of pumpkin seeds. <laughs> That's 15 grams of saturated fat on its own. And guess what? You haven't, we haven't even gotten into the big one. Coconut butter is my saturated fat superhero. Eight tablespoons in total. That's 100 grams of saturated fat. It's also a rich source of fiber to keep my remyelination going strong. <laughs> In this feast of fats, I've discovered a secret. Saturated fat isn't the enemy. It's become my remyelination ally in the quest for MS recovery. I would love to hear from your thoughts. Most people believe saturated fat makes you fat, which is funny. In my case, I'm finding the opposite true. I'm finding myself, I'm getting leaner. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe while you leave that comment. Until the next one.